it's a message of faith, love and hope. It's a message of Jesus. Especially in this um, cruel world that we live in. Especially in this broken and ailing world. The message of Jesus Christ is a message of love and hope. It's not a message of self-righteousness because we're not out here to boast of our own works or anything that we want to claim to ourselves. But we're here speaking and talking about the love and the mercy of God. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're here talking about the cross of Christ and the blood of Jesus because there is no other way one can ever connect with God except by the blood of Jesus. Good works are not good enough but the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the sacrifice that suffice. The religious works that we do are not good enough. Or the good works that we do are not good enough. But the only way that humanity as people we can ever have a relationship with God is through the blood of Jesus. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no forgiveness of sin. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no reconciliation with God. And we really do need to reconcile with God. You know, because when you look at the states that we find ourselves in as a people, need for repentance. The love of many is getting cold. You know, hostilities and hatred is on the rise. People hate each other. You okay? seated at the right hand of God. There is no greater honor than that for God to call you up into heaven and say come and sit on my, at my right hand. There is no honor greater than that. The name of Jesus is above every other name. So I plead and I speak the blood of Jesus into the very foundations of the town of Odom because it's not God's will that any should perish, but that we should all come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is. Just knowing Jesus is knowing eternal life. 
when you know Jesus, you know inner peace. When you know Jesus, you know the presence of God. When you know Jesus, you know forgiveness of sin. When you know Jesus, you know reconciliation with God. When you know Jesus, you know eternal life. Anyone who knows Jesus knows the love of God. And any person who knows Jesus knows the mercy, the mercy of God. And I speak the blood of Jesus into the atmosphere and the heavens above all them for the pulling down of thrones and dominions, for the pulling down of principalities and powers, for the pulling down of the rulers of the darkness of this world, for the pulling down of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Did you know that Satan is not afraid of anyone except the Son of God? Many philosophers and prophets and religious leaders came into this world. You don't see any demons running and kneeling before any of them and saying this is the Son of God. But when Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem, whenever demons saw Jesus, they cried out with a loud voice. And some of them came and fell at the feet of Jesus, convulsing. Because Jesus is the Son of God. Of all the people who've come into our world, preaching whatever message they were preaching, promising people that they knew the way to heaven, promising people eternal life that they didn't have. Of all those religious leaders, there's only one religious leader. One religious leader, if you want to call him that. There's only one who came into this world whom the devil was afraid of. And that's Jesus. That's Jesus. You never hear of any demon shadowing of because of the presence of any other any one of those religious leaders but when Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem demons shattered demons were shaking at the presence of Jesus Christ that in itself tells you that this is a powerful man that in itself tells you that Jesus is indeed the son of the living God for demons to come and fall on, at Jesus' feet and even confess themselves that Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, you know, there's no... And Satan is not afraid of anyone except Jesus, the Son of God. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ into the spirit and soul of the people of Odom. Because the hour is come for the dead to hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear the voice of the Son of God shall live again. Speak the blood of Jesus into every house in order for the peace of God to rule and reign in every house in order in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God is real. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is full of wisdom. The word of God is full of power. The word of God is packed with eternal life. The eternal life that Jesus gives. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. And believe you need me, we really need saving. As humanity, we really need saving. As people and as individuals, we really need saving. Because this place called hell is real. And the place called heaven is real as well. And I know that this is an, an uncomfortable topic for many, you know. But it is better to think about it, get it right, than to find out too late that there is eternity to be spent. The moment life comes to an end, you will find yourself in one of those two places. Either it's heaven or it's hell. That's the bottom line. This is how it ends up. 
It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. When your life comes to an end, it's going to come to an end and it's going to be in one of these two places. It's going to be either heaven or hell. So this is something worth thinking about. This is something that you really have to think about and decide for yourself where you want to spend eternity. Because God's not going to choose for you. You have to choose for yourself. You have to make your own decision where you want to spend eternity because God's not going to choose for you. You have to choose for yourself. You have to choose for yourself and you have to think for yourself. I am amazed at how many people I meet who have conversations and all they can do is parrot what someone else said. Because when I ask follow-up questions, they don't have answers to the follow-up questions. You know, for example, I get a class of people that come to me, they say to me, the Bible is changed. You know, the, the issue of the Bible, the first thing they say is that the Bible was changed. But when I ask them where in the Bible the changes were made, they are unable to tell me where the changes were made. So that tells me, that I'm speaking or talking to a power. You're just repeating what someone else said. How about you think for yourself? How about you go and do the investigation and the research yourself? Better yet, how about you pick up the Bible and read the claims that the Bible makes for yourself? You know many people came to Jesus from all walks of life, you know, from those who thought that they were morally upright um, to prostitutes, to criminals, every single person who came to Jesus left a different person. Every person who came in contact with Jesus left Jesus transformed. For the better, I look for the worse. For the better. Some came with leprosy. And their leprosy was cleansed. You know, there was a man who was dying of leprosy. The man comes to Jesus and says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus put forth his head, touched him, and cleansed his leprosy for him. Another one came to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, my daughter is at the point of death. But come and lay your hand on her, and she shall live again. You know, the, the cry of a parent over a dying child and Jesus followed this person to the field to the house as they were as they were getting to the house some people came over and said don't trouble Jesus anymore your daughter is dead you know but Jesus still went into the house and rose this girl from the dead she was 12 years old and Jesus rose her from the dead and you know why Jesus rose her from the dead because when God speaks, creation has to obey. You have to be God in order for you to put life into a, into dust. Because the word of God tells us that God made man out of the dust. So for Jesus to command life, please, please, you're right. God bless you. You're right. Okay. How is your night? It's good, but it's good. Jesus walks into the house, he goes to where this girl is lying dead, and Jesus goes over and says to this kid, little girl, I say to you, arise. And this girl who was dead, lying on that bed, came back to life because Jesus commanded it. Now you and I know 
that only God can do that. You and I know that the only one who has power over life and death is God. No human being has power over life and death. So for Jesus Christ to do this and raise this 12-year-old kid from the dead, that in itself tells you that Jesus is the son of the living God. Because no one can do that except God is with him. I'll give you another one. Jesus had a friend called Lazarus. You know, what a blessing to be a friend of Jesus. If you're a friend of Jesus, or you're in a good social circle, if you're a friend of Jesus, you know, then you're in a good social circle. And the word of God tells us that Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. So Lazarus died. They put Lazarus in the grave. Lazarus has been dead for four days. But when Jesus got to the grave, Jesus commanded the grave to release Lazarus. And Lazarus came up out of that grave alive. A man who was dead for four days. Now you and I know that the only person who has life, who has power over life and death is God. So when Jesus did this, when Jesus went to the grave and commanded the grave to release Lazarus, who was dead for four days, that tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. Because when God speaks, creation has to obey. The miracle working power of Jesus shows you that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I don't know what situation in your life needs the miracle working power of Jesus. But if you were to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will also have access to his miracle working power. If you were to believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross to shed his blood, to pay for your sin and my sin, to reconcile us back to God, this miracle working power of God will also become your miracle working power. God will act in your life. When you pray, God will answer. It might not always be a yes, but you are guaranteed an answer whenever you pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, the relationship that we once had with God in the Garden of Eden and died because of the sin of Adam, that relationship will come back to life as well. Because that is God's intention, that's God's desire, that's God's plan, that's what God has in mind for you. When God made you, he made you for fellowship with him. When God made you, he made you to be in a relationship with him and he as the father. God has no other relationship for um, humanity except the relationship where he's the father. When Jesus was crucified, remember what he said? He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. So obviously Jesus is calling God his Father. And when uh, and Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit comes with Jesus. And you hear God saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So you see, God is calling Jesus his Son. So who are, uh, am I to say otherwise? And who are you to say otherwise? Because Jesus is calling God his Father, and God is calling Jesus his Son. These two obviously know each other. They are obviously in a relationship, a father and son relationship. And I don't think anyone has the right to say anything else. You just got to leave them to it because they are father and son. Why do you want to come between father and son? Why do you want to cause havoc and drive a wedge between father and son? Only a cold-hearted person will do that to drive a wedge between father and son. Jesus is calling God his father and God is calling Jesus his father and I think that that settles it. No one should say otherwise. Especially if you weren't even there when Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem, when Jesus was performing the miracles, when Jesus was preaching the gospel, when he said to the people that lived and talked and walked and ate with Jesus, the people that preached with Jesus, the people that ministered with Jesus, those are the people that we listen to. We want to listen to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John because they saw Jesus face to face. They 
they went and traveled with Jesus. We're not listening to somebody who came on the scene 600 years down the line talking um, about how Jesus Christ is not the Son of God when he himself says, I am the Son of the living God. The reason why Jesus came as the Son of God is because we lost our sonship. We lost the relationship where God was the Father. That's why Jesus came as the Son of God. And anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, that's where salvation comes from. The miracle working power shows you that Jesus was the Son of God. The prophecies shows you that Jesus was the Son of God. The raise, raising from the dead shows you that Jesus is the Son of God. Even people who shout from across the street, you know, without any 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 any, any manners, without any social etiquette, they still deserve the right to hear that Jesus is the Son of God. It's, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is no denying that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Thank you very much. God bless you. There is no denying that Jesus is the Son of God. Those who like to deny that Jesus is the Son of God deny that because they wanted to suit their own ideology. But the prophecy tells you that he is the Son of God. The miracle working power shows you that Jesus is the Son of God. The fact that Jesus lived a holy, righteous, blameless, sinless life tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. The resurrection from the dead tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. 2.3 billion Christians in the world tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. Go anywhere in the United Kingdom, they say, church beauty, wherever you go. That in itself tells you that Jesus is the Son of God. Every time a person is baptized, that's a testimony of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whenever you visit or whenever you're invited to a baptism, you are in being invited to a playing out, to a witnessing of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Every time you see people going to church, that's a testimony that Jesus rose from the dead. Because if you know anything about Jewish history, they used to do the Sabbath, but after Jesus rose from the dead, they switched from Saturday to Sunday in honor of the man who rose from the dead. There are so many things that tells you that Jesus is the Son of God, and all of these things will on the day of judgment. Because every single one of us, a day will come when your life comes to an end, and you find yourself before the true and the living God. And when you find yourself before God, all these signs and all these uh, testimonies will speak either for you or against you. They will speak either for you or against you. The moment your life comes to an end and you come face to face with God, before God says anything, he's going to look to his right hand, he's going to look to Jesus first, and at that point, Jesus will either accept you or reject you, because Jesus said, Whosoever shall confess me before men, I will confess them before my Father which is in heaven. And whosoever denies me before men, I will deny them before my Father which is in heaven. That's what Jesus said. So the day your life comes to an end and you find yourself before God, the first thing that God's going to do is ask Jesus Christ. And if Jesus knows you, then he knows you. But if you've never set your foot inside the church, you see, if you're not in the house of God, if you're not in the house of God on earth, you are never going to be in the house of God in heaven. Brutal truth. If you're not in the house of God on earth, you are not in the house of God in heaven. If you don't keep in contact with heaven while you're on earth, you will never have contact with heaven in the afterlife. The only time some people have been in church is the day they were dedicated as a baby the day of their wedding and the day of their funeral. And when your life comes to an end, put 
books will be open, and when those books are open, you are going to be judged according to the gospel of Jesus. Because Jesus has been to the afterlife and back. Jesus Christ has been to the afterlife and back. And he has told us that he is the resurrection and the life. That whosoever believes in him, though he were dead, will live again. That's what Jesus said. If you believe in your heart and confess with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who died on the cross for your sins, you will be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. God will bring back that relationship back to life. So I speak the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ into the very foundations of the town of Odom. Because it's not God's will that the dead should, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that we should all come to the same knowledge of who Jesus is. I speak the blood of Jesus into the atmosphere above all for the pulling down of thrones and dominions, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places, the rulers of the darkness of this world, demonic prince, principalities. I speak the blood of Jesus Christ into the heart and soul of the people of Odom because the hour will come for the dead to hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear the voice of the Son of God shall live again. I speak the blood of Jesus into the very gates of Odom not the physical gates and the spiritual gates for the triumphant entry of the word of God into the hearts of the people of Odom in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord bless the people of Odom in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.